Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, January 31st special meeting of the school committee. We have just returned from executive session and at this point we can, those who would like to rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance can do so. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I will go right into, I just had a very quick uh, report just to update because next week uh, we had talked back uh, a few months ago about diversity training and I just wanted to update you guys that I have been talking with uh, Don Ronan who is the chair of the Youth Commission and the Youth Commission is pursuing a training for the Youth Commission on um, diversity and inclusion with visions and has they have invited Mina and I to attend the presentation that they're going to make to look into that so that my hope is that next week we will be able to bring back something to see if, as a school committee if we're interested in collaborating with them. I think we've talked very much about how we want to get some training and I also like the opportunity to collaborate with the Youth Commission and to work side by side with them since we're doing so many things with so many of the same um, demographics. So I, we, if we like that we will report back to that and then also look at some of the other resources that are out there for us. So there was that. And then just the other thing. Well, Nancy, if I may ask this question. You are usually there at the Youth Commission meetings, right? Would we need to post the meeting? Uh, does that help? Or so we, else it, I do not know? believe there's going to be a quorum of the Youth Commission there. That This is a meeting on Wednesday that's taking place. Are you? It, I it's, it on Wednesday. It's, it's this I yeah. OK. And I think for the same reason, I don't think they're going to have a quorum either. I think that. Oh, I see. In, OK to allow for that, and then okay. they'll present back. Although I think the Youth Commission, I think, is going forward whether we decide to go with them or not. OK. OK. Anyway, so that was my Thank you, Nancy. My piece. So, anyway, that we can move into our, uh, our new business then. OK. Um, so that brings us to the Legacy Farms Host Community Agreement. Um, people may have noticed that there are two articles on the Special Town Meeting Warrant for February 11th. Um, just as an update, I've been in communication with the legal counsel for the school committee and our legal counsel has been in communication with the town's legal counsel. So Nancy Campany, who's our legal counsel, and Mary Miares, who is the legal counsel for the town, have mutually um, decided uh, or give us the opinion that it's probably premature for us to take action on the Legacy Farms matter when we get to special town meeting. So their recommendation is that both of those articles be passed over. Um, so I think we can entertain a motion to make that happen, at least on our end, because we recommended Article 5, sponsored Article 5. Thank you so much, Dr. Kavanaugh, for that background. I think that's very really helpful for the overall committee and even for public who's listening that these conversations have happened. And we are on both sides of the town as well as on the school side, we're in agreement. Yes, it's um, nice to have that communication. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, to use uh, the words of the chair uh, of uh, the Board of Selectmen, I often hear Claire talk about one Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. So in that spirit, I would like to make a motion um, to move to authorize the chair of the school committee to make a motion regarding Article 5 of the town meeting warrant at the February 11th 2019 special town meeting as follows. The school committee moves that the town vote uh, to take no action on Article 5, such authorization to be subject to the Board of Selectmen recommending that the town vote to take no action of Article 6 of the town meeting warrant at that same meeting. Can we have a second on that? I second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So that passes and I will give uh, the chair of the board select me call tomorrow to discuss this uh, and like you said in the spirit of working on Hopkinton. Okay so now we are on to the Hopkinton High School Substance Abuse Prevention Grant. Uh, Denise Hildreth in collaboration with Evan Bishop have uh, written a grant and they have uh, received $75,000 to work on substance abuse prevention. Um, at the high school. So the grant has come into the community and all I am looking for is your vote to accept those monies. I move to accept those monies. 
It's always wonderful to accept money like this, right? <laughs> it is, um, yes. So very thankful to all the people who are involved in writing the grant and getting that done. Uh, I second the motion. That's great. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So that passes, and that is very exciting. In, am I right? There's also a, the town also had a matching grant on their side, so it actually was a, a total of more than that? Oh, I don't know. Okay. That. I, I, yeah. That may be but true. this is just this grant is just under the jurisdiction of the high school. Is that right? That is correct. Yes. So they've been even. So even if you have seen, they're going to be doing late buses after school. I did I see that. That, that money yeah. comes from that grant, which is really exciting. It's being very well That's, received by the yes, community. Yes. Yes. Very well. So nice. the one question, and I would perhaps reach out to Mr. Bishop, but is will that also transport middle schoolers? Because our buses that typically transport high schoolers also transport middle schoolers. I'm guessing that if there's no overcrowding, there would be a reason why middle school kids couldn't get on that bus. But you would be I, asking. I'm not really sure what the um, confines of the grant are and what it was written for. Mm -hmm. um, so that may be where it gets a little gray. Okay. But, um, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So that uh, moves us into the school committee chair annual report, which I had sent out a, for the meeting a couple of weeks ago. I did not send out a revision <coughs> because I did not finish completing what I was revising. Okay. Uh, but I did want to offer the opportunity if there were additional things that you guys wanted to add to it or anything more that we could discuss. In, I'm not looking at you because I'm trying to put you on the spot because yeah. you're across from me. <laughs> no, um, but it, it just because I do want to make sure that I haven't left off anything that you guys would feel would be important to include in the town's annual report in May. I think Nancy are very thorough. I had looked at it quite some time back and I thought it was thorough as is. So I, I actually really appreciate you sharing it with all of us and giving us an opportunity to provide feedback. Thank you for putting it together. Thank, Thank you for putting the time into it. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. I agree. I thought I thought it was okay. okay. Then I will move it along. So that, that was actually all I had for that piece. Thank you all. That brings us into our FY20 capital budget review, which I, I do you want me to set that up just with a little bit of background for people to understand? Sure. Uh, so sure. we were at the, invited on Monday to, to attend the Board of Selectmen's meeting on Tuesday, but because we didn't have time to post it, we were not actively involved in that process. But what came out of that is that there was, <coughs> there were two of our capital articles that were recommended by the town manager not to be funded. The, the, my understanding is because of the money that's available. And so that triggers us to need to go back and review our capital budget uh, to make set priorities for what we want to pass on that will make it on to uh, the next phase. Mm -hmm. so, that. so is it the amount uh, and not specific items uh, that were recommended? Um, well, both. So, you know, as, as we all know, we're, we are getting to the place where, you know, the budget and the funding is finite. And in order to make not only the operating budget work and the capital requests work, um, some are going as pay as you go, which is free cash, and some are being, um, will be debt exclusions. So the way the recommended um, recommendation came about, and again, just a reminder that the town warrant, as we just looked at, will be finalized on um, Tuesday. So as it stands right now, um, what you see in that memo is what was recommended by the town manager to be funded. The two things um, that were not put forward to be funded are the kitchen equipment and the vehicle replacements. So if we back up just a little to that other column, um, in terms of adjusted costs, there were only two items that actually um, there was a ju an adjustment from the time that the school committee approved it to the time that we, um, you know, have gotten to this point. One is we received a quote for the boiler replacements, which put the cost of that at two hundred thousand. The original estimate that we were using was one hundred and sixty thousand. Um, so looking forward to the town manager recommendation, it is still at that hundred original $160,000. That one in particular, I would like to be able to use the Green Communities Grant. 
um, which isn't written. Uh, but you know, I think that could make up the shortfall in in that uh, specific item. So while there is a risk there, I, I do think that we can get that covered um, by a grant. The other one that we adjusted was the vehicle replacements. So that original request was for two replacements, or two vehicles. Um, one was an athletic van and one was a um, van for special education. In you know continuing the conversations, more conversations with the athletic director, the utilization of the the um, the vehicle for athletics would be almost zero because our teams do not fit onto that vehicle. So we pulled that. Um, so that cannot justify asking the town for a vehicle that has minimal usage. So the only one that was still in there would be the special education van. But as you can see, like I said, the kitchen equipment and that van, neither one of those were funded. Um, just like last year, what he did um, was collapse some um, some of our original requests. So the building and grounds equipment, the HVAC equipment, and flooring collapsed into one omnibus facility improvements district-wide, which is similar to what we did this year. Um, the nice piece about that is it does give us the flexibility to address um, you know, so flooring may be 30, but HVAC may be 50. You, you, mm -hmm. you, so it gives us that flexibility. So I do appreciate that being collapsed into that one omnibus article. Um, so this is where we are. This is what currently is on that warrant for town meeting. Um, so it's up for discussion. We have not really... Um, dove into that vehicle, the special education vehicle yet, because of course just the, the timing, um, just knowing the timing that we uh, got this information. So the other option, if it still remains a priority, is to look at you know the potential of a lease. And then what we would have to do is figure out a way to get that lease um, cost into the operating budget instead of doing it through uh, a capital purchase. So it's, it's doable. Um, you know, if the special education still feels that, that, that this is a priority. So that's the option. The kitchen equipment, again, if something becomes catastrophic, we can use that omnibus um, article, that facility okay. improvements, um, and get it something that has a failure, which of course is a risk of not putting out lunches. That would be bad. That would be bad. So, so overall, your recommendation is that uh, whatever we are looking, the way it's presented, from a priority standpoint, it's still okay. I'm comfortable with what has been funded. Okay. Let's put it that way. Okay. Okay. Um, I have one question. You know, from the last time that this was all presented, um, the one item that's on my mind is the bus parking lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like um, from, you know, when we had approved and uh, appropriated the funds last year, and I know you have put in a lot of effort, you and your entire team, working uh, <coughs> with a lot of other members to present uh, all of it and get it through the planning board and whatnot. At this point, with the growth that we are seeing, and we know that the buses that we currently have, um, and you know, the, the numbers are only going to go up the number of buses. Mm -hmm. Putting that parking lot where uh, it's currently suggested, I feel we need to rethink that. Um, and maybe that's not the best location. I mean, we still need a parking lot for sure, because we want to be able to save that $100,000 that we've all been talking about. Uh, but I, I don't feel comfortable about that place, the location at the moment. So I was hoping if we can put some more thought around this and spend some time, um, you know, researching, is it the Irvine Todaro property a possibility? Are there any other possibilities? I, again, it's no disrespect to all the work that you've done, uh, but just how quickly we are expanding. And there were some concerns related to buses idling right next to the high school where all the kids are. There were some concerns of that nature also that were brought in. So I'm hoping we can use this as an opportunity to rethink it. Um, 
you know, that, that's my view. Uh, if others have other thoughts. Well, one thing I, I think you have to keep in mind that the, the designation of that parking area is to separate your passenger vehicle traffic and your bus traffic, which right now creates a real safety concern. Um, so the motivation always is to separate that traffic. Now a long-term plan, you could park during the day at another location but you'll still need that location to have dismissal and pickup no matter what to separate the buses and, and the vehicles. And there really is not another location to do that. Fair enough. And, um, you know, if we were to rethink it more as something from a safety standpoint first and think about the parking itself as a separate item, um, I don't know how uh, easy it is for you to kind of separate this out a little bit. We still ask for safety, which is our number one priority, right? I'm not sure I follow. Is it, I, I think what you're asking, and stop me if I'm wrong, sure. is, is it possible to fix some of the safety concerns without making an entire parking lot back there? For example, if we had the buses go back and queue up so that they're behind the high school, and go out there to make some improvements to that area without committing to the full parking lot right there. So we looked at using that access road mm -hmm. as lining the buses all up along there as where you would do your drop off and dismissal. Right. But the problem is then you get in conflict with your middle school uh, drop off and, and dismissal which happens over there in the water tower parking lot. So we had looked at that. No. But, but I don't know, okay, so did, I'm not following that exactly because if they go between the middle school and the high you school. You can't go between the middle school and the high school because you have a lot of uh, students crossing. Okay. We looked at that first and that posed an extreme safety concern. Because they'd have to get down there from the... And that the amount of foot traffic for students that go between and use that access is is tremendous so i think uh, what you're saying is that parking lot whether we put buses there overnight or in the daytime or not you'd still need some place to line up a whole bunch of buses the mm -hmm. same way we do out front right now mm -hmm. which is what you would call staging exactly so the kids would walk out of those buildings and into those buses back there so as opposed to there being a queue there would be buses that we could call staged exactly right? Can I just ask you to elaborate a little on what the safety concern is? Because currently, there's like the big island. I mean, I'm not sure where the commingling of the people and the passenger vehicles and the um, pedestrians happens because the bus students go into that protected area where the buses are that's between the island and the middle school. And the people going into their cars go on the other side of that island. So what is the concern for safety in that? When you have both your, your passenger vehicles and your buses using the same access and exit all the time, you're, you have that constant crossing. So you're dismissing basically your entire school through one funnel. And so if you look at most schools, everybody has a dedicated bus inlet and outlet yeah. and a dedicated passenger vehicle inlet and outlet. And we only have one. So this creates that separation. I mean, I'm sure we can't just simply reroute traffic. Like we have the other exit now, right, to go out onto the loop road. I mean, when, we're not allowed now really to turn in there anymore with the new traffic patterns at dismissal to, in front of the school. It's just, I like that the kids are cozy. The, the kids who are getting on the bus can't get hit by a car because they're protected in the bus area. And the kids going to the cars, and that's kind of, it's a different story, but I, you know, I don't know, I'm not sure I'm clear on the safety. Like I feel like anywhere we move it, there's always going to be pedestrian traffic and, and bus traffic and cars. I'm well, the sure. one other piece of, that, that would be advantageous, I think, is in the Hopkinton Police Department when we talk about parents picking up at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. We have a terrible problem because the first five or six parents will come and queue up right along that sidewalk. And it used to be that they would queue up along there and then go all the way down Hayden Row Street, mm -hmm. sometimes 
backing all the way up to Pleasant Street. You know, it was crazy, right? So now what we do is we stop them. So the first five or six people are there, but then we put all of these parents back on the loop road. And parents, even though we ask them to please pull down, go through the parking lot and turn around, they inevitably will do three-point turns. We've got kids walking, traipsing through the snow. I have an issue, and I know that when I've been out there with the resource officers, they've been concerned too about afternoon pickup out there. Um, if the buses were not in what we currently call the bus loop, that would be a very nice staging place for parents to do pickup. Like, that would be my only thing that I think, at the end of the school day, what a really nice way for kids to get into cars. Agree, but we still have a flood of juniors and seniors who are heading to K-Lot, J-Lot, like all right. those. I mean, there's a, a ton of kids mm -hmm. who are not only walking, but then driving with new licenses and maybe, may or may not be making three-point turns where they shouldn't be. And I mean, it's a big issue. I don't know. I, I, I am of the same mind as Mina, I think, in that I would like more time to evaluate what we're doing. Um, part, my, actually, my concern, aside from that, was more not knowing where we could expand the high school, but knowing that with our enrollment, there's very likely going to be expansion needed at some point, and there's very little land in the Loop Road complex <coughs> that can accommodate a non-permeable surface, like a building or a hardtop or whatever. I would hate to see us invest in a solution and then three years from now need to bump out the back of the high school and be constricted by a parking solution that then needs to be reworked. Right. So I'm con just concerned, um, again, even more than in October or whatever, I feel like the enrollment is growing. The likelihood of expansion in my mind is pretty legitimate. And I just want to make sure we think it through. So, I'm, so regarding this conundrum with the um, capital budget, I'm wondering if, I'm a little nervous about not having the SPED vehicle. Again, I don't know enough about that. Is, that's a new acquisition, right? It that's says correct. replacement. But, yeah, well, it, it says replacement, but it, it is a new acquisition. That's correct. That's really so I feel like that is a more urgent need. And we, <coughs> we have to provide transportation. So whether it's with our own owned vehicle or through some other mechanism, there's a cost. You know, I think this is a, a safe way and an affirmative way for us to say we are meeting that need. So I, I like that, I kind of hate to see that go through a zero myself. I don't know if we can change the request on the, um, on the parking lot to reserve 50000 for some additional analysis and then move mm -hmm. more to, you know, I don't know. I just don't personally feel ready to go ahead now that it's at 7000 700000 with all these other considerations. Just a clarification on the SPED van. We currently own one special ed that's van correct. that's used, I know, for the 18 to 22 mm -hmm. population when they're going out. Would we that van be kept if, when we purchase another one? That van would be kept. So we would have two then to do that's it correct. and allow more flexibility <clears throat> for, for example, the ESY program and other programs that go on that would they would require the transportation. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Um, I know at the bottom of what you've given us, you said you're going to look into lease options. Do you have a ballpark idea of how much it would be I, to I, lease a van? Like I said, I have not had the, at the time to look into that at all. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about the need for the sped van? So it would be additional if there was additional um, places where they were taking the students, whether it be vocational. Um, the, the conversations really would have to be with Dr. Zaleski too. Okay. You know, it's it's been a few months since September, right. October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But she has talked about students going to Framingham State, students going That's to right. Your Average Joe's. Yeah. We really are transporting kids in a lot of directions right. now. Right. Well, which is exciting, actually. Is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about our 18 to 22 program not quite being well we would like it in-house, so it, it's important that we provide good opportunities for 18 to 22-year-olds, even if we can't do it here. So I, that's why I kind of think it's a commitment to those kids. So now I'm not clear there because we do have a van already doing that. We do. It, the, the van that's being purchased would not, 
it would interfere with that. It would be for additional program, which I'm also I, I'm in favor of that as well. Right. I'm not trying to, yeah. but just for clarity. Yeah, it's just a matter of if what would be those additional programs, and could we handle it with the right. existing van if that's what it came to. Uh, Nancy, I'd also heard some ideas about the 18 to 22 program. Um, I, I don't know if you've been able to make any progress on that. I know there are a million things going on on any given day. Um, so is that something that uh, we would consider? So I'm just going to interrupt you for one minute Sorry. because Jen Devlin is now going to, is phoning in here and I just wanted people to be aware that now we have a, a remote participant. Uh, hi, Jen. Hi. Thanks I'm, for one, is this where's that? They want to put it by um, down by here. Susan's sign. Okay, that's like great. Thank you. Thank you. So Dr. Kavanaugh and I had a meeting, not was it last last week uh, at the Resident Center to discuss some possible uh, collaboration with them in, in moving forward with the new and improved 18 to 22 program. But it, at this point, has not enough probably shape to it to report back reliably here. I see. Oh, and I but guess yes, that's where I was, yes, I, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, I can't uh, wait for the big reveal. But I was wondering if there was, you know, since we are re-looking at some of these capital items, is there something that we may need related to that, um, that we could possibly think of? There would be so many things that I could think of. The I think the issue that's hard is that we don't have concrete enough information to right be able now. to put it into sure. an article for that, mm -hmm. for this. And I'm also not sure if we're allowed to add things that aren't already on our list. I would say probably not. <laughs> but uh, I do think at some point there would be some. We would be coming back and looking for some money to okay. move this forward in different ways. Dr. Kavner, one request that you know I made earlier is, uh, while this is the title of the request, to have another column of description, I think that would help us and also the community to know, um, you know, when we talk about system-wide technology upgrades, what's mm -hmm. in it. So a little bit of description would be very, very helpful, I, I think to just put it on paper and make it available to the entire community. When we're asking for a $200,000, mm -hmm. I, I think it is helpful for people to know what it is. Sure. So I hear reservation on the bus parking lot. I think Jen probably um, is not up to speed with that unless she was watching at home. Uh, no, I, yeah, I, I missed what you, what you discussed before this, so I'm just trying to piece it together. So we, the list that we're looking at is from the memo that uh, Susan sent to Carol, uh, and it was in our drive. Okay. And the, she went through the, the articles as they appear there, she, highlighting that there were two, that the kitchen equipment and vehicle replacement that had not been recommended for funding. Okay, right. And, and um, Mina and Amanda both spoke to some concerns they have about the bus parking lot. I don't know if you want to. Right. So this was, I mean, is it the bus parking lot it was approved at last town meeting and we just need approval for a, gr a larger dolly of value amount at right. this coming town meeting? Is that correct? We, That's correct. Yes. Okay. And it, it's, we approved, is it $400,000 last year at town meeting? Mm -hmm. The request, so we're only looking this year at the 300000 because the 400000 from last year would still stand. The, okay. To, to bring the total to 700,000. And the extra 300,000 was because of what? I can't remember. Uh, really re around the requirements to uh, answer to the stormwater management. Um, right. We had to raise the entire elevation of the parking lot um, and put in mitigation factors, um, you know, for, for it being a parking lot. Right, okay. And, and Jen, you know, in the past, you have been very vocal about getting the bus parking lot done because of the savings that we right. have. And so that's certainly on our minds, but uh, I think the bigger concern is with the growth that we have seen. And in this year, 200 more kids, nearly 200 more kids, 
um, and our bus numbers increasing. So the space that we have uh, is fairly limited, right, for parking uh, at the current location. You're okay. shaking your head, Susan. Do you no, want to so to that? The, the bus parking lot is planned for 30 buses, but it is also planned for 35 driver vehicles. So we had always said that the intent was that if we continue to grow with the buses, we would be displacing the driver vehicles and they would have to carpool to the lot. So we have room for expansion. Okay. And is that 30 of the big buses, the new size, extra yes. large? Okay. I, I thought for some reason maybe it was 28. <coughs> but we have 28 now. Okay. But, but we also remove the possibility of expanding the high school path, right that was my concern which could well be a need soon so i agree it'd be nice to come back and talk about this again okay and i think that if i remember correctly one of the reasons why we couldn't do it last summer is because it wasn't it pushed through um which board quickly enough in order for it to be approved right that it it needed to go to um get all final board approval that's correct Okay, and so the delay is kind of what got us to the point where we now have to spend more money, right? Well, it just really the um, rules to be able to build on that, that lot, not really the delay, but oh, okay. just, right. just so getting that happen? final order of conditions. Okay. Yeah. So this is the capital budget, right? This is the capital budget, All that's right, correct. Right. Yeah, right. that's been moved forward by the town manager. So, okay. so yes, that was the other piece that you missed was that we need to have our capital budget, um, like to take another crack at it to meet what their requirements are, so that it can be finalized by uh, the February fifth, which is Tuesday, Tuesday, I believe. So that right. this is, so I believe, our last chance to to finalize what our priority priorities are before mm -hmm. they go forward. Mm -hmm. They're hoping we can reduce it by one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is that what? Uh, they, they, uh, Jen, what I had said is that I was comfortable with the changes. Um, the kitchen equipment not being funded, if we ran into a catastrophic failure, we could use that facility improvements district-wide because the collapsing of those uh, three original requests into one kind of omnibus article, which is similar to what we did for this year, gives okay. us, get, that gives us the flexibility to spend it where needed. So if we do have a kitchen equipment failure, we could use that article for that. Okay. Um, and the vehicle replacements we were, uh, which is really a vehicle re purchase for special education. We currently have a vehicle now. This was going to be an additional vehicle. Um, so since the timing was so late, we have not had the conversations on really examining the utilization and what would happen if we only could use the existing van? Could we get all future programming into that existing van? Um, and then the other option would be if that proved to be difficult, looking at the lease option and then um, trying to figure a way to get that lease payment into our operating budget. Right, okay. Yeah. Can you just clarify on the kitchen equipment? That's that is um, replacement. That's right? replacement. It's all, all of its replacement. Everything is replacement. Yeah. Because I had asked um, Susan, I was kind of eager to think that maybe the kitchen equipment would help the throughput for our students because they're, the lunch, um, sort of management of the lunch queues is a huge issue at, in some of the schools and the kids don't have enough time to eat. So I naively thought maybe extra ovens or whatever might help produce more food more quickly and get kids through lines or whatever, but not the case. Okay, it's replacement. Nice. So Nancy, would it make sense that we call out, we vote for the three hundred thousand separately and vote for the rest of the items separately, or is everyone in agreement on uh, how are we thinking of proceeding with this? So I, I had a couple. Of, I just want to raise a couple of things first. Sure. One is the bus parking lot has been a priority of the town and I think of the school committee for some time. It, so if we vote not to include that this bus lot in this capital budget, is it possible to transfer the money to a different lot, or do we have to vote for this specific? Do we have to make a decision on this specific lot right now? 
Well, the difficulty is we do not have any study yeah, of sure. any other place, so it, it would be it would be a start over. So, so I'm I, sorry, the four hundred thousand that was approved by annual town meeting is specific to that lot. It's not specific to that lot, but you only have two years, so that money would revert back to the general fund, um, and we have not mm -hmm. done a study. But again, you don't have a place to stage your yes. drop off and pick up. And so as you say, as the buses, the bus numbers continue to grow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we barely now fit in that bus loop. It will now go out. I, and that was going to be my second point, was that the safety concern I do see as something that we want to address. I feel the pressure of the, the timing crunch here and wanting to do right by the schools and by the time town I, my concern in moving forward is that <coughs> if there is thought that we are going to move a bus parking lot down the road because of a high school expansion or anything else, I think it's a mistake to build the full lot now and double the cost. Because I imagine if we put a $700,000 lot behind the high school, we're going to have to pay probably $700,000, give or take, over on the Irvine Tadaro property or wherever ever else it goes. So I, I know you keep discussing um, the expansion of a high school. So keep in mind we don't have a feasibility study. Yes. So that's that that's years but, out as but well. If, even if we put modular classrooms back there, I mean that that is my understanding is the site for any based on the original architectural design for a future expansion. This would be back there. I don't know if it could be moved someplace else potentially as well. I'm sure we'd have it redrawn. Uh, my guess is, based on how at capacity we are right now, it's not going to be too many more years before we're going to be going forward and saying we need modular classrooms. I, I guess my, I, and I, I, I'm looking to you to, to see what your Either modular yeah. classrooms or right. we immediately act on some kind of feasibility study because I do think that the even, high school is the place that's going to need at least four new classrooms. It, even with a feasibility study, we, I, it's hard to imagine that we would have the five years, even if we right. had some miracle influx of cash to, to put an addition on the high school, it would take a good five years to start to finish. In five years, I think it'll be too late for the, I think we need something in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Bishop in the fall, I mean, they I give so much credit, all the principals, for their creativity and space utilization because they've all done such a great job. But I mean, they were considering expanding junior privileges and whatnot just to create space for study periods and and um, classes. I so I know that they're all, I, you know, and having you know high school, or I know that it's it's full. And we have all those kindergartners who are just going to come. Well, and that kind of an addition is the kind of addition that like would be town funded. It's not an MSBA. No, right. So, okay. So that's. So one of the thought that I want to throw out there is the hundred thousand we've been wanting to save for the past two years. Right. I mean, there was some urgency around that too, um, and it's a sizable amount considering what we are looking to spend to get this done. Um, so, are there any thoughts on what could possibly possibly be done with the four hundred thousand, or um, what we have already? Is there is there any? You don't have flexibility in that article. It would revert to the general fund. And the hundred thousand you're talking about, it was fifty thousand for excise tax. That's right. right. That, that's what I remember. The right. other fifty thousand to was fuel. it not, um, negotiations or whatever was it? It was a fuel. It was uh, credit to us, which we took the hit on for this year. Right. Okay. So, so we've paid we, we've we've paid that additional fifty thousand. We didn't get that credit. But the fifty thousand excess tax would be year on year because obviously it'd be every year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we would no longer pay into the town to and we'll so it's more fifty thousand. So it's more fifty thousand. Yeah. But last one I heard, I, I that's what was my question annually. when I had right fifty annually. So but fifty yeah. for with the fuel fifty thousand be an annual amount for the fuel as well. Yes. Difference. So it yes. is actually a hundred thousand dollar difference yes. annually. That's correct. Because it's still fifty excise and fifty fuel for next 50 year. Fifty in year con con contract credits. Yeah. yeah. We don't pay for the fuel for the buses now. 
or is it just it's, a different? It would be less fuel as they're coming mm -hmm. from Hopkinton than if they have, we're paying fuel for the buses to get from Ashland to Hopkinton. If the lot was in Hopkinton, we wouldn't have to pay it, that. It's built into the contract yeah. price. So okay. calling out fuel separately is not really I see what you're exact, saying. but it's built into the contract price. Okay, so when we renegotiate, that would come out, or is that would that come out? They were give, they were going to give us a credit of fifty thousand if the buses were here, and that's every year credit for, a for as long as the contract. And then so we, we so would be losing the credit. Yes. Yes. If we, so if we're we losing a hundred thousand dollars regardless. Yes. So that's a hundred thousand, I guess. Yeah. So that's a, so that's a consideration. Okay. It is. It's a painful decision. I think either way. I think, I think we kind of have to, I, I, I mean, we don't have to do anything, obviously, but I feel like we should really, this is, like you said, this has been something that we've talked about for kind of a, a long time, and I appreciate the concern for space in terms of what we're going to do when we need to add um, classrooms, but the immediate need, I think, is, like you said, if we're bleeding $100,000 a year right now, um, we need to address that, and I mean, it's a big number, but it's gonna it'll pay for itself in three years which is about when we're, we're gonna need to address the, the space needs at the high school so you know we got to kind of pick things in the order they come up and I, I think this is a big one because it should have been done last summer and I you know we missed the boat with that and and so I really do think it needs to be done this summer it should have been done last summer but at almost half the cost and now I think I, I just wonder if we can put can we build a parking lot not there and then work on the site flow as a separate piece. But I think if we have to start over, we have to start over at more than double the cost because we have to start from zero. We have to find the spot, have the engineering you know, group come out, do a complete feasibility study, and then rebid, it's my understanding anyway, the project. <laughs> So it's going to cost more when all that happens two years from now than it's going to cost right now. And maybe so. I just want to. I just want to get it right. I don't want people looking at us in, in three three years saying, "What were they thinking?" You know, we have this pod classroom pod. We can't put it where we want, or we can. Right. You know, I just want to make but sure. It, we but get in it three right. years, the bus parking lot will have paid for itself in the hundred thousand dollars a year savings from excise and. It's seven hundred thousand dollars. It's a seven hundred thousand dollar project. Right, right, but this additional three hundred thousand dollars that we're looking at right now will be sort of, you know, a wash in terms of the the project itself. Susan, how much has the town already spent on that site behind the high school? In doing feasibility studies, you know, um, engineers, probably at least fifty thousand. Yeah, again, so Nancy, you know, I'd expressed what I had thought, and I think we've all expressed some thoughts here. Um, in order to be able to move forward, how do you propose? Uh, so I think in terms of, like, logistically, I think what we need is a motion from somebody on how they feel, what capital articles they feel we should move forward <coughs> with, and then see if the motion is a second, and then we'll take a vote. My, sense from the conversation is we're a little bit divided uh, and I think it's that's okay I think that that's yes. you know we make the de best decision we can with the five of us uh, and that's why it is very good right. that Jen's able to call in uh, I, I think whatever decision we make I think there are pros and cons to it I think that that safety piece is a big piece uh, and yeah. balanced against the need for the money in the town versus the need to get it right and future classrooms, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I, I just feel it's a little complex, right, the, the aspects that are in here. Um, and with the new information that we know of the student growth, despite that we have seen, right, it's not gradual. It's, uh, and we are expecting right now, nest deck projections, 103. Last year, nest deck projection with 50 became 200. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what 100 would become. Uh, so uh, having said that, uh, getting it right is important. Mm -hmm. um, and with new information presented, that's where um, I am at. And I understand the bleeding part. That was certainly uh, you know, something on my mind as well. And all the work that Susan and her team have already done, it feels like uh, 
you know, it, it, it's, it doesn't seem fair that we've done all this work and now, now this. Uh, but I, I would rather take a moment, think about it and work through. We have the 400,000 still. So hopefully between now and summer, we can think about how could we use that 400,000 I don't think we you, can think about it. it the 400,000 we don't actually have, the 400,000 town meeting voted that we could appropriate towards a bus parking lot. Right, right. So, so so we can, So, but then we said that it's not tied to that lot necessarily, correct? Correct, but it, I'm guessing there's nowhere, nowhere in town we can build a lot for 400000 if we couldn't do it there. It's, I think it's not, <coughs> I, my guess, and I, please jump in if I'm wrong, is that the cost was so much more over there because there were things that needed to be done that were not anticipated. Right. So if we don't move forward with this 300000 we'll be left with 400000 that's been appropriated for a bus parking lot, but 400000 won't be enough to build a bus parking lot, and so we won't be able to do it. it. And we have to start from the beginning at town meeting to say this is the project we want. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Then that's correct. And and again, you Not only have that. you only have two years. So if we don't make a decision, at the end of next year, that money goes away. So um, okay. So one other question for you: What about the Tudara property? Um, had we looked at that and. Um, I guess I'm just wondering what I am uncomfortable with truly is that not being very clear with all of these new things that have come up with the limitation on you know the bus numbers right. growing and what I feel we need some more thought into it and unfortunately the timing of it is such that we always have to you know we're six months uh, projecting ahead six months and here we are right so I would like to spend some time just thinking through what the process is, um, you know, um, that's where I'm at. So I, I don't want to cut anybody off if anybody has anything to add that we have not thought. I think the next step is if you or somebody else had a motion to how we want to move forward with which capital articles to move forward with and vote it to kind of see and then if we whatever motion goes forward passes, then we're done. If not, we'll come back with a second motion and hopefully by then we'll have gotten it or a third one, if not. Um, does that make sense? That it, Because taking one article off of three, taking that $300,000 <coughs> would allow the funding of two others. So the, a potential motion that if you wanted to take the bus parking lot off would be to fund the article, the ones that don't have funding. That actually may not be the case. Um, because the 300000 was to be borrowed, and you would not be doing a borrowing for those other two. So I don't, I don't think you'll be able to switch that. So, so it would okay. be a matter of pulling it and pulling it. So that, we're that would be it. We're still probably not going to get the special ed van, not, no matter what we do. Not by pulling the bus parking lot, because the funding sources are different. Okay, that piece I was not fully following. So, so which ones are pay as you go, and which ones were to be borrowed? So, the sped van was going to be paid for outright. We had the forty-six thousand, or have it in the foreseeable in the foreseeable future. We don't. We town we on, yeah, we that. only put forward our request. The town manager has control, control over the the funding. So, but my concern with the special ed van is that. If we talk about going back to our operating budget to look for lease money, our operating budget does not have a lot of, um, does not have wiggle room. And in fact, my concern with our operating budget is we worked hard to present a fiscally responsible uh, budget that took into account the students that we believe we're going to get. But like Nina said, we're not sure 100 could turn into 200 kids for next year coming in, in which case having a lease that we're also paying for on top of the expenses we've already approved for, we're not going to have the room to provide what we need for incoming kids. So I think everything except the bus parking lot is paid as you go. Yeah. Yes. Can I ask a question about the HVAC? Just mm -hmm. to get full. That, does that fix the air conditioning at the middle school auditorium? Mm -hmm. Is that... <laughs> So, Just curious. <laughs> so it's not a fix of the air conditioning in the middle school auditorium. It does not exist. 
My understanding is the air conditioning is about a two hundred thousand dollar. It's over a two hundred thousand dollar engineering and install. There is no air conditioning in the middle school auditorium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's oh, not well. because it's broken. Yeah, okay. it's because it doesn't exist. We need a farmer's almanac ah. to predict when it's going to be really hot at town meeting before we bring that forward. Or the concerts or whatever. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah. But, for, but I mean, in terms of people wanting to vote. So fancy. Yes. I know that this isn't helpful right at the moment, but I think that uh, Mr. Person would be able to look at some drawings of that high school because he is of the belief that, um, at, well, it's rumored that at one time footings were put in to that location over there in the event that you had to enlarge that high school. Whether that's true or not true, we don't mm -hmm. know, but that would be something that he could explore for us, but not right now. But, so. but the, the rumor for those footings are basically the patio, I so see. not where the bus Right. Parking lot. So it would, but again, but it's rumor. It's and all a rumor, and, and, and we have not been able to find any plans or anything to substantiate it. But the rumor mill that we heard from was that it would be right. Basically, it's that alcove. Right. So, and that would be where the addition would be, um, which is a logical set, which is a logical place because you have quick and easy access to the mechanicals. If you are going to do an addition across a road, you have a very, that just adds to your costs in terms of connecting mm -hmm. to your mechanicals and everything else. So the logical place would be that patio right off the cafeteria. But again, that's un unsubstantiated. Mm -hmm. So, but that's just something to keep in mind. I'm ready to make a motion. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to wrap my brain around um, the fact that there's the pay-as-you-go items. In order to add the special ed van back in, we have to cut something else. It's not the bus parking lot. That's so correct. And, and it is your recommendation, I, I assume your recommendation, that we leave the kitchen equipment and the vehicle replacements out. Well, the special ed van we currently utilize a special ed van that we have a service it, agreement with. It's something? separate from that. The the except collaborative that provides the transportation ah. for our special ed kids does so for kids in their placements, whether it be in district and they can't take regular ed transportation or if they go to a school out of district um, that for special needs. Okay. The, right. This the one that we're using currently provides transportation for our 18 to 22 program to be able to get them to like Framingham State and off-site activities uh, okay. that they do. Okay. And also for the ESY. Do they do they use that for ESY? Is that how ESY gets places? It would be. Field trips. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The other thing that I know that our 18 to 22 kids have been doing is sort of ride sharing. So sometimes they will be on the Westboro band, the Westboro kids will be in our okay. band, so we've been Clever that way, at least. Right. So, are you uh, then you're comfortable with those two items waiting on them? Yeah, I feel like the kitchen thing, as Susan has said many times, you know, that can come out of something in the omnibus okay. if disaster happens, right? And I think when we look at some of these things, so we say, well, the boilers are 200, but yeah. you know, whatever. The very first year that Susan was here, we didn't really have that 10-year capital plan in place. Yep. So she and Tim Person have actually gone through, I think, a pretty rigorous look at all of those mm -hmm. systems, yeah. so to speak. Oh, yeah. And now we are in a place where we understand that we have more of a replacement cycle for things like boiler and HVAC. And so I feel like we are in a lot better place than we had been. Would I love to have that van? Yes. Could we probably get by another year without it? Yes. I mean, we, are, we do have one van. We've been ride sharing, and I think if push came to shove and we really needed to, we might be able to say, let's look at a lease for a year, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's not ideal, but you know, of all the things in that list, that's sort of where you could put a band aid and make things work. So, is, oh, go ahead. is there any way to approve the bus parking lot contingent upon further analysis? Like, so that you know, once we approve the money, do we have any ability to, to hold it up till we're ready to, like, I know these, there's a two-year window, but if some of us feel like we'd like to do, have, spend some of the money maybe even to do more analysis or 
find some of our operating money to do another ask answer another question or look at Tadaro or yeah. like it may be that we can do the Tadaro lot for six or seven hundred thousand dollars. So by voting yes on the three hundred thousand, does that lock us into the existing plan? And how, what language could we put around it to not do that? It just, it locks you into a price based on the bids that we took. Yeah. So it doesn't lock you into that parking lot, but we would not have any money appropriated to study and start over for another space. That has to come out of not capital. That has to come out of... That has to come from someplace that is not... It does not. It either has to come out of our operating budget, right? Yeah. Or out of separate funding. Could we add something? How much did the study cost in the past? Uh, I'd have to go back and, and look, um, but like I said, I think it was over fifty thousand. But you, we can't add to this because it hasn't gone through the capital review process. We can't add to it. I so. Just piggyback on the end of us. Can I chime in on that one more really quick? Because I think that um, that's a good point. So we can approve this capital. Um, we can improve these right now, but um, it doesn't necessarily guarantee, uh, as you said, that they it gets spent on, especially with regard to the bus parking lot, if it's still up in the air in some people's minds. We can say, yes, we'd like to have this money put on the warrant for the capital budget, but we, um, you know, it doesn't mean it has to be spent on the parking lot where it is right now, even though that's the one that, it, you know, we were initially targeting. It, it, it would be nice to have that place marked so that if we can get it done and under that two-year timeline, we only have, do we have a full year left? We have one more year, right? We the, the initial? Yes, you so, are. So we'd have to spend it sometime in, in the next calendar year anyway, or it's a moot point. So we might as well, I, I don't know. To me, it seems like if we approve this, then we could potentially have everything amazing, set up the parking lot, bring, you know, reduce our costs, or it all goes away, one or the other. But either way, we have to approve it what, as part of the capital. What actually has to happen in the two-year window? Because I know things like the field house at Fruit Street, there was a long lag from town meeting approval, the years, to construction. So does it actually have to get spent, or does it have to, does there have to be some movement? Like, right. in my experience of approving things at town meeting, we then wait a very, very long time, often. And, and like things like the Chestnut Street Light, I mean, things that just take a long time, we're not actually spending that money in a two-year window, so. So you have to have forward progress. You have to have a reason why the article it, it's part of the town's bylaws. So theoretically, if we were to approve the three hundred thousand, completely theoretically, if we were to approve the three hundred thousand, knowing that we're probably going to spend fifty thousand or so to say look at the Tadaro property, where we would hope then to be able to construct the lot for six hundred fifty thousand instead of seven hundred. We don't know. We have no idea. But we're making forward progress because we are actively looking for the appropriate site for the lot. To me, I, I think, like, I, I like the concept of a lot. I love the $100,000 savings. I'm very nervous about that particular location. So I'm wondering if there's a compromised way to move forward. So it sounds like we'd have to find a separate funding source for that 50000 though. But why, though? Because we have a $50,000... I don't know that we can go back and ask for a, another study out of this appropriation, which is to build. I guess. Um, but that doesn't preclude that there might be a different way that the, the town could help us come up with the money because the town is very motivated for a bus parking lot. Right. And the capacity study, in theory, could also find that we need to expand the high school, which could also mm -hmm. fold in the impact on the campus. Yep. Right, and we do have a capital item for the capacity study, so that should happen relatively quickly. Thank you. So that we're hearing that other districts are trying to do the same and there's sort of a, a backlog of available vendors right now. Uh, one, one question on uh, the borrow um, aspect versus pay as you go. What Would you know what is the implication when we um, have something as a borrow versus pay as you go? From a, from a town? So, so pay as you go is using free cash. So, you know, it basically 
you want to use free cash for one-time expenditures as opposed to using it as part of your operating, which then becomes um, an unsustainable financial um, funding mechanism. Sure. So pay-as-you-go is free cash. Okay. Um, the borrowing means that they'll, they'll go out and actually take out a loan for that. So they don't have the cash in hand to fund that project. And at what point do we borrow? The moment it's appropriated? No. So you won't Not borrow until, until you're, 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 you're spending. Okay. That's so, correct. Okay. Yeah. So currently we have 400000 that is appropriated, but it has not been borrowed. Okay. And I've told the town not to borrow. So do we want to separate a motion out to include all of the capital items except the bus parking lot and then take a separate vote and discussion on the bus parking lot? Right. And would, would Nancy, I guess I feel like there is a general agreement that we are reluctant to do it at the current location, right? So I think we need a vote to, to affirm that Fun one better. way. That, yeah, and I, sure. I think the, the other piece is that we need to weigh in on if we vote against the bus parking, uh, the 300000 for the bus parking lot, we don't have the flexibility to look at a different site in this time frame that we would have to wait until the following, until the town meeting in 2020, which sounds so far away, but um, to look at it again. So but if we did appropriate the 300,000, would we have that opportunity to do that? Presumably, and I, I would like for I, any of the three of you to jump in to correct me if I'm wrong. If we vote to, to have the town appropriate the $300,000, we could at a later date come back and say we don't want it there or we do want it there kind of to vote that separately is that i don't believe that the parking lot is specific to location but i don't believe we can use the parking lot money to do an additional study understood yeah. we, we could we could endorse appropriating the money and not build it at all is that that's correct correct okay. so that right by by if we vote not to appropriate the money, it's a binding decision. We can't do it. That's right. Mm -hmm. If we vote to appropriate the three hundred thousand dollars, we have bought ourselves, at the very least, a little bit of time to make up our mind, and to we could also potentially look into another funding source for that fifty thousand dollars, or not. I, it just just time to think about it. Or we could check. Right. I think it makes sense to at least include it, and then if we don't, if we decide that it's not the right place, then we don't spend it, and the town. You know, it goes back to the town anyway. Yeah. If the town doesn't lose anything if we vote to appropriate it tonight, um, and then don't do it, um, but we lose out on the potential of having a bus parking lot <coughs> at all in the next year if we don't approve this now. Unless we show forward progress with the four hundred thousand. But we won't. But we'll only have four hundred thousand if we vote not to appropriate the additional three hundred thousand. We won't have enough for a parking lot. Right. right, but but we don't know what the cost of another location would be, so we wouldn't necessarily forfeit the four hundred thousand dollars if we are moving Co in correct, that direction. Correct, correct. But my understanding was some of the things that cost additional money that it had to do with retaining and catching things would Can also we, hold true on the Irvine Tadaro property or a different property. Yeah. So Nancy, would it be fair to then you know make a motion that? We approve this as as presented with the condition that the location of the parking lot itself requires for the review and a separate approval by the school committee. Something to Sorry, that effect. I, I I I do not want to word your motion for sure. you because you can make any motion sure. you want. But sure. uh, my concern with that would be we have that authority anyway, whether right. we put it in the motion or not. But if we put it in the motion, it, people may be uncertain about voting for it. Do we need to review the wording of the annual, the annual town meeting warrant from last year? Because I feel like it was specific to that location. I mean, it was a presentation. It was definitely, the voters in the meeting definitely voted with an understanding of that location, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be because the presentation was to separate the, right. the, the vehicle and yeah. bus traffic. So if we build a bus parking lot on another location, we have not accomplished anything that we presented right. at so, the town meeting. So I, I'd be vote. nervous about, like, just, okay. I, I feel like the voters understand it to be what it is. And I don't want to be disingenuous to the voters yep. that Florida Gals was intended to be there with the understanding that people had last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. 
But that was before the comments about the wetlands surrounding it and protecting the air. Yeah, completely. But it, like, I don't want to assume that that, for, that people would vote for that 400,000 to go be used at our last barrow. I don't want to assume that. I'm not even sure if that would be like legal or whatever because I'm not sure how the, the wording went on the event, on the motion last year. My computer's not cooperating. Pull that up from last year. Are you gonna look it up? I was, but. Um, Article 21, it says, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate borrow transfer from available funds or otherwise provide a summer sums of money for phase one, the campus master plan study, which includes the construction of a parking lot on town-owned property, said sum to be spent under the direction of the school committee. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a good phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's great. So, yeah, I feel like we're, it's kind of a win-win. If we, if we decide we can't go with the current location, we nothing gained, nothing lost. But if we decide we need to go with the current location, we have the funding available to make it happen in the immediate future. And we could uh, presumably, by annual town meeting, we'll have more clarity. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, not, I mean, we would not be we asking right. the town if we yes. right exactly. So I think a lot. having more information before town meeting. Yeah, that we don't have tonight, rather than between now and mm -hmm. Tuesday. Agreed. So should right. I make a motion to approve um, the total requested amount that was recommended by the town manager? We, we just took a bit of room to mean this comment. Yeah. I mean, normally once we approve, the school committee's job is done and the spending occurs. Like, we don't have, you know, if we're approving. Mm -hmm. But it's we, under the, it, the one that was done last year is under the jurisdiction of the school committee. Right. It's, right. Okay. It's she's appropriating not to be Jen. <laughs> yeah, Jen. Sorry, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> So is that how we worded this year's? So I don't know how it's worded in the warrant. That's just the, because we don't write the actual warrant. We don't write the warrant. But we could but regard, suggest that. But, but, but regardless, the 400,000 is still under the jurisdiction of the, in the 300. And also, being in the room here, I think we can all okay. understand the intent of what, and to bring the intention back before we get to town meeting. Yeah. at that point to have clarity on it. Um, I would specifically like this noted in the minutes that we all felt that we need to relook at the location and there are concerns around that, uh, you know, with regard to growth, uh, with regard to the expansion, um, you know, some of the things that we have talked about, if we can just minute that, we can bring it back. I don't think we all feel that. I think we could say that we all feel that way unless you we can say vote. You can say that the, that concern was raised. Yeah. Mm. That in request was made. I, I, sure. I, I guess all I'm saying is, uh, from my perspective, if the three hundred thousand helps us, you know, bring that money in because it's anyway been approved by the town, recommended right. by the town right. manager as well, as as well as the department, we can look to other places, right? Mm. At the same time, I want us to take a vote that we're talking about not utilizing the space. So by approving this, it shouldn't be that we start building it here. We're, we can't start building it until after July 1st anyway. But Fair enough. I, I don't feel prepared to make a vote up or down on whether we're definitely going to do it there or not. I would like us to come back, look at additional information, and as a school committee, I can, send you the, I can send you the exact wording right now if you want. I'll, I'll send it to you via email. But it just says on town-owned property, so it does not specify in any way, shape, or form a specific location. It only says on um, town-owned property. 
So I, and you, it, it could be that enough people feel strongly that it can't ever go behind the high school, in which case that you could make that motion. But I, it, for me at this point, I don't feel comfortable voting to say it definitely can't. I want to wait for the information to come forward right. and then decide before we build anywhere. Right. And, and fair enough, Nancy. And you know, in, in full disclosure, you know, I just want to be clear yeah. that this is not something I've just thrown up, thrown out right here. I had a brief conversation sure. not yeah. too long ago, a couple of days ago, actually. Yeah. Um, but it does take time to yes. get all of this information together. Mm -hmm. It does. <clears throat> so I, I don't want to put any words in your mouth because any of the motions that have been put forward are okay to put out, and we will vote and go forward with how we all, uh, the majority of us feels. So any, I know that both you and Meg have each mentioned that you would like to make a motion, so I am. Somebody else want to make the motion I now? We'll see if God like what Meg, <laughs> uh, either of you, and we can vote as we will. Um, I make a motion to pass the fiscal year 20 capital budget as recommended by the town manager of one million three hundred and ten thousand dollars. Okay. Do we have second. a second a second with Jen and then we'll do a roll call vote because we have a remote participation. Aye. So Meg is a yes. Mina. Aye. Amanda. Aye. And I am also a yes. So we passed oh, yes. passed that motion. Are there any did you get Jen? She oh said she yes. said I did sorry. Okay. I, did. <laughs> I am yeah. Um, yes. I'm sorry. So yes, so all five of us have um, voted affirmatively on that. Are there any additional motions um, that we need to consider? I like the motion for the minutes. I just don't think it can be stated as a unanimous thought. Yep. So that, so that would be... Um, I'm, I'm just thinking if we could uh, entertain a motion that speaks, uh, you know, the wording is something I'm going to think of to say that uh, before we start the work on this uh, money that we are proposing be appropriated, a thorough study be done with the new information that has been provided related to the growth and some of the concerns related to expansion, et cetera, that have come forth um, and appropriate uh, post presentation of that information. Uh, that was quite, uh, I, quite. Uh, I, I understand. Yes, yeah. I couldn't repeat all of what you just said. I do nope. understand what you're. Uh, okay, let me try to make that motion. Is it appropriate for the school committee to define a liaison member to work with the business operations person to? do this um, analysis work? I mean, is that an appropriate thing? Uh, I mean, just when yeah. there have been some concerns and, you know, just to keep the community perspective in the conversation, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if that's getting into operations or if that's getting into planning. I don't know, I don't know where the boundaries are, what the roles are. Jen, what do you think? <laughs> You're good at I know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking as you said. So I feel like um, I feel like it's something that should be, let you know, reported to us, and then we discuss and um, move on. But I think our sort of position on it is not unimportant. But I think you know, I think the the school um, leadership has to you know take a look at their resources and figure out what's going to fit best for, I mean, if this, if this is a, a full town thing, that's the tricky thing. I don't know how, um, <clears throat> right now we're looking at putting it on school property, which for sure falls under the umbrella of town, but specifically falls on school property shoulders. So, for example, the Arrow property is not school property, it's town property. So I feel like that sort of, there's this gray fuzzy area where you know, right now we're talking about school property, so the school committee has some pretty significant voice in it. If it goes off of school property, how does that affect our voice? Even though it affects the schools, it more specifically affects the town and the money spent through the schools on transportation. So that's a fuzzy thing. I, don't, I feel like we're, we have to be more of a um, approval voice versus a, 
I think there's too many working parts for us to have a direct. I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm mixed on this one. Yeah, I think I kind of agree with you, Jen, that you know, one of the things that I believe is that we sort of put all of these folks in place because they're kind of sort of the experts. And I'm right. just thinking that if, you know, Mrs. Rothermick and Mr. Person are interacting with engineers and doing site studies and all of that, there is no reason why they can't come back and give you reports regularly. Right, right. To help the you make good decisions. really know what they're doing should be doing this. Right, exactly. Right. I'm sorry, I was just busy directing the motion. Uh, so I didn't catch up. Uh, are we ready to may I make the motion that we were talking about <coughs> earlier? Please. Um, I'd like to make a motion uh, to review the location of the bus parking lot given the student population growth and possible expansion of the high school and other related concerns including safety. Um, and this information must be reviewed with the school committee prior to proceeding with this project. Possible need for expansion. Okay. With that, yeah. Yeah. with that amendment. Okay. So the motion. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second, and we will do a roll call vote. Aye. Meg. Aye. Aye. Jen. Um. Yes. Amanda? Aye. And I am also an aye, so that that passes as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, so good thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> rich discussion. <laughs> it is a rich discussion. This is good. Uh, and it, it's, uh, it's, I think, was time well spent on that. I do too. Oh, that was so important. Yeah. I have um, lost my internet here to have the actual agenda in front of me. Apparently that should be a call. Capital budget and then Oh yes, okay. Yes, I think we're at the agenda. <laughs> sure. Do you yourself, yeah. these things are falling down. I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Hang on a minute. Meg is a I mean Hi. Jen. Uh, I'm a yes. Okay, and I, am a, and I am a yes, and we are so adjourned at 9.32. Uh, thank you all for uh, bearing with us, and we will see you uh, at the Board of Select meeting. And, special thank you for H and yes. a very special thank you for HCAMP for coming out on an unanticipated meeting tonight. So thank you very much, and have a good night.